So I'm just going to redo this video because of uh, problems and stuff. And uh, first of all, you see me doing a lot of stuff in videos that I do not endorse. Bang. I do not like these sugar-free drinks at all. So just so you know, <coughs> no one's paying me as far as I know. Except for maybe the owner of the suits I wear. Just magically appear out of places. I mean, at the end of the day, there's something entirely different going on in this world than what we can see with our eyes. And if you're sitting inside, watching me on TV, playing video games, you're missing the entire show. There's a different show going on out here. There's a different game out here. Quite, quite both of them in one. Whichever you want it to be. They say you actually are inventing it. But, um... Let's keep it at that. I do not endorse most sugar-free stuff. 90% of it tastes like chemicals. I'm just drinking this because it was in my car and I purchased it because I said, hey, look, they got a new flavor. Maybe it'll actually taste good. So no, not endorsing that. Um, <coughs> I haven't tried their coffee. Maybe their coffee's good. I'll try that next. Monster coffee is like some of the best coffee in the can. So I'll give their coffee a try before I refuse to buy anything by then I've, by then I've already had. <coughs> um, <coughs> or anything by that name again. Anyways, I'm redoing that video from earlier. It's just a lot more to the point here. See, what happened is at the GameSpot debacle that uh, they were like trying to leverage it so you could see that the the stock market is rigged and you don't know honestly it's not rigged like that it might be a bunch of people working together and it might be pretty fake but if you put your money into a corporation you know that corporation gets that money and gets to do what they want with it and you know that when you get into the stock game because that's the point of it and that's how you make decisions pretty much putting your money where your mouth is putting your money in what you believe in but <coughs> you know there's this group out here that's in control of stuff or groups or individuals you know really no one's quite begin to detail a lot of that uh, you know some people call them the masons or the illuminati and stuff like that or, and then there's other names we can't call them because it's illegal to call them by that. And you'll get your video removed. So, I mean, I just assume that's the right? That's, that's what you can say. So, you have the owners of Robinhood, who are the trade company that are in the center of this debacle. What happened is people put their investments in there and then they wanted to put a, they wanted to pull their stuff. I believe that's called a put option. A certain day that's like pulled out. And uh, don't quote me on that, but this, that's pretty much what they were doing. And they were putting, they were going to all like pull out their money at a certain point. And then the owners of the, Robin Hood, which is where you trade your money for stock or cryptocurrencies. The owner of Robin Hood said that at 3.33 a.m. he got a phone call saying, you know, it's time to shut down the shop for a while. So, first of all, we have the owner of Robin Hood admitting at 3.33 a.m. he got this phone call. And you guys might know how the story goes. What happens at 3.33 a.m.? Well, 3.33 a.m. is the Mason's Hour. The Masons are the, you know, the 33rd rank of Mason of Masonry is supposedly Luciferian. They don't talk about it. You can get up to 32, but they have the special 33rd rank you get to. And so the owners of Robin Hood specifically stated what time they got their call down to the minute because they wanted you to know that but they didn't say anything else and everyone else is attacking Robin Hood 
while Robin Hood is technically providing you with a piece of information that they might get killed for putting out there. I mean, they put it out there and the people who know what that means know what he just said. You know, you might be yelling, hey, there's a shark biting that lady's leg off. But if you say, hey, there's a hexagon biting that lady's leg off, like people are like, a hexagon, what? If you don't even say it's biting a leg off, people will be like, what? Right? And you're like, what? You're like, what is this idiot talking about now? That's exactly what I'm saying. When he says that number, that's what people think. When he says he got a call at 3.33 a.m., you're like, what is this idiot saying? Except for you're not really saying that because that's just part of the casual conversation he's having. And he's a sellout now. He's sold out. <clears throat> what I see going on around me is something different than selling out might be happening to people. There, there might be people who have children and someone calls up and says, let's say your children's name is Brittany. Brittany and Bill. Someone calls up at 3.33 a.m. and says, hey, how are Brittany and Bill doing? And you're like, who is this? And they'll be like, you know what you need to do? Like, uh, the, there's a problem with what's going on with your Robin Hood stock exchange here. And I think you need to stop letting this happen because it could cause some problems. Now, they probably don't always have to name Bill and Brittany. Uh, I suppose with most people, they could start with some really basic stuff. And uh, stuff, it could be stuff that you didn't realize anyone else knew. That, that's what one thing that happened in my world was when Beans came around me talking about my personal life. And I'm like, okay. And like, now you've got my attention, right? Like, obviously... I got your attention, and now you got my attention. And this is probably what Robin Hood thought when they got their call at 3.33 a.m. Maybe this wasn't the first call they got, or the first interaction they got. And I assume, with many people, it probably takes several times to figure out what's going on. Or, you, you, you don't figure it out, trust me. It's confusing. But to understand that what you just seen is really happening around you. It's, uh, it's hard to explain. You really have to see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, feel it in order to know what might have happened. But at 3.33 a.m., Robin Hood is saying they got this call because it is part of what actually the debacle is about. Except for the debacle has also avoided this too. When they, I, I seen someone post a video with like some unknown person with low viewer count, low subscriber count. They posted something the other day, but I've been looking for that since like day one it was posted. I was like, is anyone gonna like mention this? And no one did. And even, I don't think that person specifically mentioned it, but they said, you know, it's the usual people. And it's like everyone within this group here that's kind of what they're saying, is that this group exists. But when they come out with the GameStop debacle, they don't tell you those little specifics mean anything. And it was only one outlet where I heard them mention that specific time, and when I look it up, I don't find it. But they made sure to mention that in the video. So, what's really going on here and we can't even be sure threats or what what happened but what happened is they got that call and they got that code they got a special code right it's a special code they got a, a, a hidden message <clears throat> like this message will self-destruct if you ever try to tell it to someone else right because no one else is going to understand it so they told him that. <clears throat> or you're going to self-destruct if you explain to someone else what this message means. That's actually a little more accurate. Figure that one out. Hold on. Let me let me make sure this is working. I had so many problems earlier. Excellent, excellent. I got the settings right. But 
you got to look in to, uh, I, I don't even know where that I was. I found that. I was actually looking at stock videos and people talking about stocks. Not people talking about a debacle, but I believe I was looking at actual stocks and then they came through with that. Or it was possibly a link on Reddit. <clears throat> Reddit's a great place where I'm the only person on the entire site who has a identifying picture of who I am. So, and there's 10 million accounts that have no identification, except for cam girls one to them. But, not always the place I like to trust. But I followed the video anyways, but it was the stock people. If that's where it was. Other than that, I was already watching stock videos that month because I'm, you know, I think right now, with everything being slightly quiet and the change of the presidency and all that, you could probably learn more about politics by watching the money right now. Seeing who's benefiting at this time of year. And, I mean, if there's nothing going on, it's kind of hard to watch. If there's no visual war going on, there's probably an economic war somewhere. So, it's pretty much always there. Anyways... You have them saying that at this time, and then this group is kind of pointing towards this stuff. That is the whole point, kind of, of the GameStop debacle. But but when this stuff gets out there, they, they're always vague about everything. And, I mean, they own the media, so why do they even put it on there? I don't know. Part of, part of a bigger plan. I mean, maybe I do now, and it's part of a bigger plan. And so that that's why that got cut off. I specifically said that. No one's really mentioning that yet. I would think if you're smart enough to start putting dollars into an investment, into a cause, that you might understand what that cause is about. And if you're... If the group you're working with, Robin Hood, like start saying <coughs> those codes, maybe you should like listen to those codes, you know, if, if you understand what they are. Because they have ways, they have methods. Like, I mean, look at Epstein, right? <coughs> I've been saying I'm pretty sure Epstein's one of their methods. And... I've seen just one person. But if you look at Epstein as, as an operative rather than a sex offender, as someone who worked for a group or a nation or a planet who uh, had an agenda as opposed to a person who just wanted to have sex and hang out with presidents, then... You know, and I think it's obvious if you look at it that way too. I think it's a little obvious. You're like, you know, he like he hung out with presidents and had sex with children, and really, like he didn't do anything else. Like, well, it sounds like that might have been his job somewhere in there, either hanging out with presidents or having sex with children, or possibly both. But I would think maybe that's one of their methods. I swear I've had small people come up to me, and I definitely. <coughs> I was told I did, too. Uh, I can't firm or deny any of that because I asked for their ID. But other than that, I myself think something like that happened to me. And I assume if that happens to me, I, I don't know, maybe I'm really far up on the, on the ladder right now. You don't know me, but, but I'm sure people looking at the world have seen me before. Uh, I should have did it the opposite way, right? I didn't really think of it. I never took it seriously. I didn't. I s still don't. Uh, but it, it, there's something there, right? Ew. Man, those fake sugars <clears throat> taste so bad. One of them tastes good, but not that one. But you see that, and that's what they're talking about. He gives the sign that they've contacted him. And, you know, what? there's several ways you can look at it. Like, they've sold out. Or they, um, 
they had to bow down. They had to, you know, take a bow and leave the stage. That, that's the end of their game. That's, that is kind of what happens, except for in the case of Alex Jones, we have Alex Jones appearing and then Alex Jones appearing rich after so many years. So there's a difference between Alex Jones 1 and Alex Jones 2 if you want to give him the benefit of the doubt. That doesn't mean he's sold out, but I mean, look, look really, I mean, look from the start. Before, you know, Alex Jones won, we had on camera. Those videos are probably removed from the internet, right? Oh, Alex Jones got removed because Alex Jones is the number one, number one oh, Nazi or whatever, whatever excuse they made. He's the number one Trumper. They don't like Trump, supposedly, but these are just tools. When they do stuff like this, these are tools. They're like, hey, go talk to Alex Jones. And then they're like, oh no, don't talk to him. He's saying stuff we don't want. We're gonna ban him. But they're telling you that, right? If When I ban people from my life, I don't make a video telling you who they are, right? They're gone. Out of sight, out of mind, gone. No offense. I mean, that's the point of it. No hatred, it's gone. Vamoosh, you know what I'm saying? They're like the wind, gone with the wind. But with Alex and all this other stuff, really, they keep it in focus. And so a lot of times when they do something to you, it's kind of like just to like push you in directions and make sure you stay within a certain narrative you have to stay in. And that leads you to like QAnon where you have 400 people kicking in the door to the Capitol under the guise of QAnon. And QAnon ties deeply into this because the methods are the same. Bitcoin, QAnon, GameStop debacle. Who's behind the GameStop debacle? Who's behind Bitcoin? Who's behind QAnon? We're just taking guesses, aren't we? And people are just now asking that about Bitcoin. And I was asking that eight years ago, right? When, when did Bitcoin come out? I was asking that. You told me about Bitcoin. I'm like, what's Bitcoin? Where does it come from? And then you're like, I don't know. And, I'm, and someone else is like, check out Bitcoin. I'm like, what's Bitcoin? Where does it come from? And they're like, I don't know. And so by the third time, I'm not interested anymore in what Bitcoin is and where Bitcoin comes from. I'm interested in why these people don't know what Bitcoin is and where Bitcoin come from. And I got a lot of other questions, like how does anyone understand Bitcoin when the masses are not involved in technology at all? I mean, there's like a million questions, but there's really those simple questions. How did this arrive on my doorstep? And who decided that that's the gift I should receive? That's the package I should receive. Shouldn't use the word gift, I guess. Not always a gift. Some people, not everything is a gift. Or, or maybe to every, to everyone, everything's a gift. We just don't see it that way, right? <clears throat> but um, you, you have these repeated patterns in these things. And you got to look at these patterns. And it's real simple. It's kind of like how you should live life. You should look at something and just ask it. Ask a question about it. You know, I used to... Um, and maybe you should analyze it and watch it and make sure it is what it says it is too. That's an important lesson I've learned in, in, in like relationships is I shouldn't listen to what someone tells me. I should, you know, watch what they do and what they do is what they talk to me about and all this stuff. It's kind of important here too in the Robin Hood thing. Because according to them, Robin Hood was a hero. They had some low price and easy to exchange stock and stuff like this. It was, it was good enough that noobs could get into it, right? And supposedly they was helping people by doing that. And then they put the stop on the fast selling. And that's when the call arrived at 3.33 a.m. that began this entire debacle. But if you actually are, like, involved in this stuff, 
you you might know a little bit more about what's happening here and what happens. They don't. It's not necessarily a matter of some people selling out. I mean, let's say people are selling out three hundred strangers to protect three family members. Is that even selling out, really? It actually it doesn't sound like it's selling out on some levels. But, you know, that's what happens to these people. They don't necessarily sell out. I assume many of them face threats and, you know, serious threats. But, it, 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 you know, I'm not worried about someone who's got a gun and has an army and stuff, tanks and planes with and drones and bombs. I'm not worried about that stuff. I've never been, you know, like, I never looked at that and been like, oh, I, you know, I should never, like, oppose anything like that because it'll defeat me. But when you kind of see these other methods going on in this world, when, when it gets to the point where you, you kind of force them to show you, what's going on in this world to some extent, you start to change and you're like, yeah, that's interesting. Some things could really happen in this world that uh, I didn't know happened like that. I'm, I'm kind of at the point now where I question if I have an injury, whether I have that injury or there's something that has caused that injury uh, makes it happen in my body other than me, something, some external force possibly. Some people say radio waves might actually, you know, do a little bit of damage or even control the brain. The brain's an electromagnetic little thing. The human body's kind of like a, a biotechnology suit. It's like a biotech suit. It kind of, I mean, it looks pretty close. Either the world's magic or it's technology. And if it's technology, there's something up with this stuff. And if it's magic, there's something up to people in control of it as well. But that's another discussion, right? Except for, it's kind of not, because you begin to see other things. And I think that uh, GameSpot debacle has brought the GameSpot debacle to the forefront. It, it's done its job. Robin Hood did its job. Mixed with the GameSpot debacle. Now this is center stage, what is happening with these two groups. I mean, that, that's kind of the whole point of this. It wasn't to make money. You're not going to make money off GameStop. GameStop died 16 years ago. Rest in peace, GameStop. You were, a lot of people enjoyed video games while you lasted, right? I myself went to local... Little mom and pa joined stuff like that, like video games, music exchange, VGME, uh, with Chad, because I like the local guys, right? Support the local. And they were the best. I mean, you really gotta go to the best. That's all that matters. GameStop was good, but Chad was better. He still is if you want video games, because he's got basically like a little museum. He's turned his, his game store into like a museum. It's like, hey, it's, at least it's like, It'll be relevant. And I think he actually sold them. I'm not sure if he sold both, but I know he sold the one. Off topic. The GameStop is dead, right? Just like VG and me had to change because they're kind of dead. Because the internet, because Steam, Steam killed everything. So there's no reason to invest money into GameStop because you're going to lose. GameStop lost, unless they magically just made a ton of money that they could invest. And I don't think anyone's going to take them seriously if they come and try to do anything. Like another corporation they want to work with to expand would probably laugh at GameStop, even if their stock was at like half a million. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, because you'd be like, tomorrow that money's gone. Because this is a joke. They're just using this as an example. So they set that example and then they come after Robin Hood for allowing this to happen. And then the people working with this group to set the example, now their narrative is like, it, it, it's like, look what happened. But they're blaming Robin Hood. When Robin Hood, in fact, came out 
and said the code words. So the group was there to try to expose something. They worked with another group to expose something. That other group turned their back on this group and said that said the special code word when they turned the back. Now this group over here who was working with them because they say this code word exists, right? And the whole point of them working together, supposedly during this one thing, this GameStop thing, I mean, the entire thing was kind of like the up in Wall Street. But this little front group was designed to bring that out. Their whole thing was designed to show you there's something going on. And, and I don't see what, what the big problem is when it comes to stocks just thinking of the word stocks to me tells me what a stock is but if you get into stocks then you should definitely know what stocks are because it's real easy if you just put money in a company or you take it out of it and that's that's pretty much what it is is it worth a lot today it's gonna be worth a lot tomorrow i'm gonna put more money into it, make them a better company it's turned into a money get, making game but at its core it's like a uh, investment type game that you just give them your money and tell them to go do something with it and if they don't do anything good with it then your money doesn't increase if they do something good with it it increases so we knew the GameStop was a failure it wasn't about GameStop and it technically wasn't about Robin Hood making people rich Right now, the name Robin Hood does imply that he's stealing like loaves of bread and giving them to the homeless or something like that. But the cooperation there in the debacle was actually brought something to light. That actually brought that to light, right? They wanted you to see something. They. I can't tell you Robin Hood's objective, but we can tell you the GameStop people's objective was to use Robin Hood as a method to shoot a freaking arrow at some unseen hand they claim exists. Now, Robin Hood, you know, is shooting arrows, and Robin Hood all of a sudden says, Hey, look, I'm out of arrows, and he throws up his gang sign, right? Okay, and then the investors in the GameStop thing were like, well, Robin Hood is no longer working for us. Robin Hood has turned tables. But Robin Hood has signaled that he had to exit the game. Robin Hood, specifically, when he said he was out of arrows, he gave you a specific reason why he was out of arrows. So the debacle... The debacle has actually achieved the goal it was supposed to, right? It was supposed to bring attention to this. You can't just, you're not going to get some people on Reddit. I mean, I guess it really matters the people who are in control, what they allow to happen, what you're going to get. But in general, we're not going to think we're going to just get some idiot on Reddit saying George Soros controls the world or Abraham Lincoln is back from the dead. And then, I mean, that'd be pretty interesting and funny, that latter part. They would probably put that person on TV and laugh at them if it wasn't me or if it wasn't Robin Hood or if it wasn't any of the people behind the GameStop debacle. I guess at this point, Alex Jones is banned, so he's officially banned. And uh, I mean, we don't even know who else banned because they do the ban anyway. We want to check this video again because we've had so many errors today. Okay, but the point being, they made the signal, right? Robin Hood said he was out of arrows, and he told you why he was out of arrows. He said, he said his quiver was empty, and he gave you a reason. He, he said there was a message left in his quiver. He didn't think his quiver was empty, but he said there was a message left in his quiver, and it informed him that... He is now out of arrows. So he's having a problem, you know, shoot, stealing from the rich to give back to the poor because someone has taken his arrows and filled his quiver with something else. So the important things here, 
the whole debacle is noticing the numerology they use when they said three. They got to call it three thirty-three a.m. How many of you have someone calling at three thirty-three a.m.? If you don't understand what that number means and you don't believe uh, that they're using codes or you don't believe that this world is fake and it's a digital world or something and, or, or whatever, however it's based, it, they. They hide numbers in it to make you think they're useful at the very least, right? Uh, and it's probably, it takes a long time to see that. At least it did for me. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just special. But I had to change my life and I stopped seeing the same thing I do every day in order to begin seeing the patterns in the world. Because the pattern in the world is me seeing this table every morning I wake up and go to breakfast for 40 years and I was like oh it's the table of course it's a pattern in the world but you know moving away from the table going to other tables allowed me to eventually see that things are kind of patternized all over so the, the, we have these numbers and this is a whole nother discussion what any of that stuff possibly means so I'm, I'm going to try not to veer off there but we have them coming up with the proper with the proper identification code of the group that they're both supposedly there to disrupt. And then the focus is, is like on the debacle still. The focus is turned to hating hating Robin Hood, actually, as opposed to noticing that, hey, Robin Hood was a star. Robin Hood got a lot of media attention. But then all of a sudden, Robin Hood threw up, you know, he, he said some code words and he left the state. So you have to look at it like from Robin Hood's point of view. And, and let's combine some Epstein point of view with that because that, who knows what Robin Hood has been up to. But um, even if he wasn't involved in Epstein, I mean... There's all sorts of stuff. You, you could like just be speeding down the road every day, and then all of a sudden someone shows you like video of that, and you're like, "Oh, you're like that's a lot of speeding I've been doing." How do you get the video of that? So Robin Hood experienced some stuff that other people don't, and I'm not necessarily saying to let them off, but. The, the focus shouldn't be on them. They kind of did their job there. And they can they can keep doing whatever they want. Uh, for as many days as they're going to last. How many days did John F. Kennedy last? I, w I would like to like watch. Watch the history replay of John F. Kennedy. Not, not some other person's recorded version. But just like watch his actual life. Every second of it. That way I knew which which moment in time they decided they were going to kill him. What thing he said that was just way off, way off chart, because, because as far as I know, as far as I'm allowed to see, he didn't say anything that was really way off chart. Not much more than Trump, right? But that's really where, where Robin Hood is sitting at these days. Robin Hood's, up there, Robin Hood's like sitting around a, a, t a table, and there's an empty spot over there that says reserved for JFK, right? And Robin Hood's kind of sitting around looking at that. And, you know, the, you, when you start to look at that, you're like, oh yeah, like right now, like right now, the best time is to play ball. And Robin Hood can't do anything right now. Like, if they're being told they can't short sell, then I mean they could, but I, they're gonna they're gonna pay a heavy price for that, right? But I, I assume that the way the market is, that there's some sort of lock they can put there. And to be honest, at the end of the day, I'm gonna argue that right now, like whatever this invisible group is attacking things from both. I'm talking about rock, the, the GameStop people. I'm not talking about the Masons, Illuminati, uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, 
you know, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to call them. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the invisible GameStop people. You got to be careful of that too. But they should realize what's going on and deal with it. And, and now that message wasn't everywhere, right? That message got to me that that existed, that video. And I've tried to look for the other times where they, the media has been honest enough to say what time they got their phone call. But why else would they put that out there, right? I can tell you I've had stuff happen in my life. You know. That time was important at least one day. Although generally I wake up pretty early already. But one day that was a very important time. I seen some stuff that like really, really, I mean, I had already seen a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. I already knew. They didn't teach me nothing new. It just made me realize like I'm, I'm not as stupid as I sound. But anyways, we gotta we gotta like look at it, look at the financial situation, and right now any sort of disturbance in the market with the COVID thing could cause some sort of issues. Were they just rich people who want to hang on to their money, and at the very least they want to cause the disturbance to cash in on it? I don't know, but GameSpot, GameStop crew has. Uh, brought this to the forefront with the debacle, along with the help of Robin Hood. And we're changing our focus right now to attacking Robin Hood, whereas the crew just worked together to bring something to millions. So hundreds of millions, billions maybe, right? This is probably pretty big if I know about it. I try my best not to read news anymore. Oh God, I still get stuff back into it. So, Let's look at everything that's going on. They, they put out the numerology code, right? And they made it very obvious when they did it. No one calls you at 3.33 a.m. If you call me at 3.33 a.m. and you're not a hot chick and you do not have an emergency or you want to party, something fun. I mean, you're going to have some issues. Why is, a, why is an investor calling at 3.33 a.m.? There's no real reason for that. I believe the market opens at a certain time, right? So it wouldn't be 4 a.m. I guess it kind of depends on where you're at because everywhere it's a different time. So arguments against what the numbers mean as opposed to people trying to make the numbers mean something. But who calls you at 3.33 a.m.? I'll tell you who calls me at 3.33 a.m. Generally is people who are never going to call me back because they're not going to want to call me back. But they get a call at this special time in the morning because it means something. So that's why they put it out there that they got the call at that time as well. And they were, you know, that's another question. If you don't understand what the numbers mean, why is someone calling this person at 3 a.m.? What are you going to do if someone calls you at 3 a.m.? I'll probably, like, be like, man, why you bother me? I've only been up for, like, an hour. But, um, all right, some days. But that is the clue. He put the clue out there, and you got to find that clue there, and that's what it's about. That's, that's what it's, it's really about. Uh, now, it's deeper than that. There's stuff you can't talk about anymore. There's stuff, there's stuff we can't say that are combined into all this stuff here. And uh, that's it. You're only going to get so far to the end of the rabbit trail. And the internet's been scrubbed, right? The books have been scrubbed. The movies have been scrubbed. The history's been erased. And this is the end of the trail right here. If, if they just fight each other, that works great. It's, isn't that how it works? Like infighting? Now you have Robin Hood infighting the Crusaders. And it, what, what good is that really going to do you know i didn't even really think of that when i thought when i started this video but that makes a lot of sense now we've got these two sides fighting each other as opposed to supposedly they were once working together and and now the focus is on the fight as opposed to the focus is on the actual fighting 
as opposed to what the fight was about. Now we've now we've lost grip of the entire point of why this is news, why this group wanted to do anything. Now we know what it's all about, do we? Because we can only get so far with the numbers 33 and with the admissions from Robin Hood, uh, which were veiled admissions. They were there, though. Don't blame Robin Hood. If you're involved in the 